Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on how to hack. And today we'll be looking at an important question, which is, should we store our credit card information into any e-commerce site? And that's a really important question because a lot of times it brings about a lot of convenience. So every time you want to buy a product online from any e-commerce site, all you got to do is enter your credit card information, your shipping address, and click on to purchase now. And of course, there's one small little button there, which states, save credit card information for all future purchases and it brings a lot it brings about a lot of conveniences all right so that's for sure and it also brings a lot all right of security challenges because how are these companies storing your data how are they storing your credit card information how are they storing them are they using strong encryption or are they just simply storing them in plain text so the reality is that we would not know we would not know how are they storing those data as a result of that, it can make it very easy for hackers. So as long as they find one loophole on the website, on the mobile app, all right, or on any of the web services that has been enabled on that application server, that will allow the hackers to bypass certain security mechanism and pull out all of those personally identifiable information, credit card details, and so on. And this is very dangerous because the moment the hacker managed to just find one loophole, they will immediately be able to gain access into all this data. And right now, as more and more companies are digitizing, enabling more and more of the services online, it means that a lot of them are enabling this shopping cart feature, this payment gateway and safe credit card information option. So without further ado, let us get started with today's tutorial. Oh yes, and big disclaimer, hacking is illegal. So ensure that you have written consent or permission from the site owner before you run any of these hacking techniques. Or the best part of all is just to try it on your own home lab network, okay? So without further ado, let us get started on today's tutorial. So right here, we have WebGoat running. So WebGoat is a vulnerable web application system for us to be able to run our hacking techniques on. And today right here, we are looking on the left side, all right, which is on the web services. So you can go ahead and click under web services and you can click under web service SQL injection. All right. So again, structured query language, which is a way for us to work with databases, to update the tables, insert records and so on. So right here, we have a particular function. All right. So enter your account number and once you click go, you'll be able to retrieve your data. So just like how you will be on an e-commerce site. On any e-commerce site where you have your saved credit card details, the moment you enter into your profile page, they will pull up those credit card records and you'll be able to see your details. So right here, when you click go, they would have the credit card number, all right? So you have multiple credit cards. They are using perhaps like Visa, MasterCard, and so on, any of those, and you would have your names and so on. So what may be happening is that when you try to run a SQL injection directly onto the input form, you may not succeed. Why? Because they would be sanitizing the input. They will be checking the fuse. They will look at the payloads they're allowed, all right, and they're allowed list. So they would have those payloads and so on. So it makes it very challenging for you to possibly run SQL injection on. All right, so you could be using SQL map, you could be using burp suite to run all those attacks on. So in this case, if I was to go ahead and enter, say, or one equal one, all right, and let's see what's the result we'll get. Click, go ahead and click go. All right, invalid account number. No results match. Please try again. All right, so these are the kind of error messages you get the moment you try to do some possible SQL injection on it. So what could be happening behind the scene is that the application system, as we send those data over, they're sanitizing the input. They're checking, they're validating against a lot list. So what we can look at instead is under WSDL, right, web services. So over here, I can go ahead and click on it. So over here, all right, I can look at the information and we can utilize, all right, so we have to get credit card requests, all right, so what we can do is utilize SOAP UI, all right, so simple object access protocol user interface. So it simplifies the whole way that we could actually pull data out from this particular web service. So what I can do here is to click onto the top left corner, all right, creates a new SOAP project. So I'll go ahead and click on it. So once I'm here, all I got to do is copy all right, the URL or the URI and paste it under the initial WSDL, all right? So once you have it, go ahead and click OK and it will prompt us for a basic authentication. So whenever you're going to WebGoat for the first time, it will prompt you for the username as well as the password to log into WebGoat to run your hacking techniques on. So go ahead and enter guest 
and gas. Click OK and we're in. And now I'll use magnifier so that it is easier for you to see. So on the left side, we can see the projects. All right, so we have the particular web service and we have the get credit card. And I can go ahead and double click onto request one. So we'll get a pop up in SOAP UI. And right here, we are going to send this particular request over into the web service to look at the result that may be coming back from. Okay. So remember to select off, right? So no authorization. Click add new authorization. All right. And basic authorization. Click OK. And enter the username and password that we entered earlier when we were trying to set up the web service. All right. So go ahead and enter guest, guest or connection to the web service. So once you have it, right, we have here the particular ID, right? So this is a string called get credit card. So what we can do here is to specify the account number. So in this case, 101. So go ahead and go to the top left corner of the request UI dialog box. Click submit request to specify endpoint. All right. So go ahead and ensure that you got the right URL too. All right. So let me change here from localhost to 192.168. 192.168.0.118. So this is the IP address of the web server that I'm targeting. So in this case, I'll go ahead and go to the left side and click submit requests. And on the right side, we get the return, right? So we got to get credit card return. So we got a couple of credit cards right here. So what can we do to retrieve all possible credit cards that are inside the database system, right? So what we can do now is to use SQL injection. So I can enter or one equal one. So or one equal one means that it is always true. So if it is always true, it will retrieve all the credit card details that are currently stored inside the database. So I'll go ahead and click submit requests. And right here, there you got it. We see all of these details immediately, right? So which is why it is critical for us not to save our sensitive data, our personal data, or even our credit card information into any of this e-commerce site else. What the hackers could do is that they could bypass some of these possible security mechanisms or there could be new services that are enabled and those services may be not protected yet by web application firewall or right? they do not have the business logic controls yet they do not have the security mechanisms to be embedded as they're coding out those services so once again i hope you've learned something valuable in today's tutorial and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. And we'll like, share and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.